So first things first, the Bucks losing to the Raptors is not a disaster, if I can rhyme accidentally, because um, what were the expectations for the Bucks going into this year? They were going to be a very good team, but I don't think anybody predicted 60 wins, MVP for Giannis, and potentially getting to the NBA Finals. And if a couple things in the series against the Raptors just went the Bucks' way, you know, Fred Van Fleet misses a couple threes, Giannis makes a couple free throws, Eric Bledsoe doesn't crap his pants, then it could be the Bucks going on to the NBA Finals. So let's not act like this team is not pretty close to being a, a perennial Finals team and all that. So that's number one. There's been a lot of talk about how they're going to keep this team together. I don't want to dive into it too much, but I'm just going to say there's a way for them to squeak in under the luxury tax or only pay the luxury tax for like one season. Whether it's get off of Tony Snell's money by attaching a first round pick. An interesting thing would be if they could exchange Snell for J.R. Smith's non-guaranteed contract. So then they would have J.R.'s non-guaranteed and George Hill's so they could save a lot of money. And... I'm not totally convinced that Chris Middleton's actually going to get a max contract. I feel like he could get somewhere between 25 to 27 million. I think Brogdon can get about 15 mil a year, and Lopez could get about somewhere between 10 to 13. And if you add all that up, they're basically borderline luxury tax. And that's before getting off of like Snell's contract, which I just mentioned. So it is possible to keep this team together and either not pay the luxury tax at all or only pay it for like one season. So I got all that out of the way. Um, Although I will say, if you wanted to open up some world where they get really crazy and let all the guys walk and then try to get another superstar in here, I would not do that. I think it's too much of a risk. Okay, so let's talk about the on-floor stuff. So does Coach Bud still need to get a little bit more creative when he's really pushed to the brink? Yeah, I mean... There were definitely a few games in this series where Giannis probably didn't play enough. I mean, he averaged 38 and a half minutes per game in this series, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I mean, you have a 24-year-old alien on your team. I feel like he should have been averaging 44 minutes a game, especially after the first two games, I guess. And I think the biggest example is, um, well, really the last two games. I mean... Like, game six, your season's on the line, and there were eight minutes that Giannis wasn't on the floor. I mean, at that point, just play him the whole game, man. And, you know, in game five, 39 minutes played for Giannis, and you lose by six? Like, that just just can't be a thing. So that's number one. Number two, looking at some of Giannis' stats in terms of post-ups in the playoffs, he averaged about three and a half post-ups a game versus the Raptors. Now, that's NBA.com's thing, and I think they're kind of strict about what they consider to be a post-up. But even then, that does seem kind of low. Now, I know that the Raptors, they had a lot of luxury and ignoring Eric Bledsoe and things like that. But even so, it does seem like there were quite a few half-court possessions where Giannis just wasn't involved enough. Now, again, credit to the Raptors because they were able to do what I didn't think they'd be able to do, which was defend Giannis and close out to shooters. I thought the Bucks shooting and spacing was going to be too much even for the Raptors and of course I was wrong so they do deserve credit. I mean they they slowed down a high powered offense but I don't think Coach Bud did absolutely everything he could have. Now of course Coach Bud's a head coach and I'm not so to act like I have the strategy and he doesn't obviously not the case but Even so, I think we would all agree. It just seemed like the Bucks didn't have some plan Bs and plan Cs ready for the Raptors, right? Now, of course, Giannis does need to get a little better. He shot 58% from the line, and you could tell it was really in his head at a certain point. He's got to improve on those. As for the three-point shooting, I mean, I think he's gotten to the point where you can't leave him wide open, which is probably all you can ask for of the dude. I mean... Yeah, would it be amazing if he could hit pull-up threes and stuff? Yeah, but it's probably not going to happen, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I think Giannis really embracing posting up would be the next step for him, and it would definitely help out this team's half-court offense. Also, I think the Raptors kind of exposed the fact that Giannis is not a natural playmaker. He is a good passer, and... There were still a decent amount of times where someone was left open 
and Giannis was able to get him the ball. But there were also quite a few times where Bucks were open in the opposite corner or whatever, and Giannis just didn't see them pretty much. So his vision has to get a little better. But now if we move on to the rest of the team and we say, all right, can this core with Giannis win a championship and all that stuff? So first and foremost, if Eric Bledsoe keeps playing like this, probably not. I mean, George Hill was way better than Bledsoe in this series. And this is officially a fear. I mean, Bledsoe was bad against the Celtics, but you say, okay, you know what? It can happen, whatever. But it happened again this year, man, and they already locked him up. And unfortunately, the only thing they can do is just hope that he plays better. Now, I guess the other thing you can look at, you might just have to find a guy who you're comfortable with putting in the game and taking Bledsoe out. So then your closing lineup can be Giannis, Middleton, Brogdon, Lopez, other guy if Bledsoe sucks. Maybe that's next year's version of Nikola Mirotic because I don't think they're going to bring him back. Maybe it's a free agent. I don't think they're going to have too many options because if they're over the luxury tax, then the, the actual option they have is pretty small. But even so, it's still possible that it's that. It could just be Pat Connaughton. He seemed pretty confident when he was out there. Maybe it's uh, Dante DiVincenzo. It'll be his second season. Perhaps he could get some more minutes. Maybe it's Ilyasova, although I don't think it is. I don't know, but you just need another guy to be confident in if Bledsoe just starts playing really badly. And then, at that point, you hope that Lopez and Middleton and Brogdon can be good enough, and I think they can be. I mean, the one fear with them is there's a decent chance that they're not going to play well every single game of a tough playoff series. I don't think any of them had just a very good series all throughout. And that's, that's a tricky slope to be on when you're trying to win championships, but it's just the situation they're in. I mean, I guess if you want to get really crazy, is there a chance that they could actually put a package together if some star became available of basically Middleton, Brogdon, and whatever picks they could actually trade, which might be in the distant future? I mean, I guess that would, be a, that would also be a risk because I think part of this team's thing is that they all really like each other and all that stuff, but sometimes you have to make tough moves like that. But that's, you know, that's me projecting potentially another disappointing, well, quote unquote disappointing playoff performance and um, and things like that. So that might be a little tinfoil hatty, but I guess it's at least worth mentioning for five seconds. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be back. If Kawhi leaves and nothing too crazy well, if Kevin Durant shows up, then that's pretty crazy. But assuming no team drastically increases their championship odds in the Eastern Conference this offseason, then the Bucks are going to be either the favorites or they're going to be right there neck and neck with the Raptors if Kawhi re-signed. And I think that's where I'm at with the Bucks. Um, you hope Giannis can round out his game a little bit more. Hopefully Bledsoe don't suck. Hopefully they can get just another guy whether it's at the deadline next season or whatever because they I mean they made the the attempt with Miritich it's just he didn't end up really working out for him because he was too erratic with his uh with his jumper and he wasn't able to make him when it started to really matter so yeah again they're not very far but there are some things that this team needs to uh to really get over the hump I guess